Elon Musk. Get on that. Some pretty epic meetings today. Meeting Peter Lerner, I should say Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, who runs all media relations for the IDF. Good friend, an amazing guy. Overall, just an inspiring dude. We're having lunch together. I do want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I do nowadays. A lot of people ask me kind of, what do you do? And so uh, I'm going to share basically what's been going on. So I've been trying to help startups over the years. Anything from PR to social to content to biz dev to fundraising, anything really. And while everyone around me was asking me, why are you helping companies for free? I kind of believed in what I was doing. What ended up happening is that many of those companies came back and said to me, you really helped us. Please take equity in the company and join the company as an advisor. And so today I've been fortunate to, to join companies such as Flipboard and many, many other companies, small companies like you move that have amazing technology, companies like Zuta Labs that built a mobile robotic printer. There are 17 companies now that I am officially an advisor at. Fitness 22, amazing company, Benny Shaviv, who I've talked about in the past. Test Ferry, T-Line, a company in Jerusalem, early stage that's building timelines out of any content on the internet, and so many others. But what's interesting here is that at no point was this my strategy or did I go out and sell this model and say, give me equity in your company. It was more here take value in any way that I can provide it and they came back to me and said you've really helped us take equity and so that's really what I'm doing today I'm advising a whole bunch of companies anywhere from day a week in their office like home talk to starting to build the product a company that's just getting started that's still stealth anything that really I can help with and so yeah that's pretty much what I've done today is built this portfolio of phenomenal entrepreneurs that I'm fortunate enough to be advising so that's the answer to what do I do there you go Meeting Oren Barzilai, the CEO of Startafire and a serial entrepreneur. And an old friend. Should be an interesting meeting. Besides being the guy with the best beard in tech and yeah. what my beard wants to be when it grows up. I'm Alon, I'm the senior product for work. How long have we known each other? Years. Probably, I would say, probably close to a decade, I would think. So, uh, how long have you been at WeWork? Six months. And that like beard that. is out of control, man. I think I heard your CEO say that, Adam say that once. He said that uh, it's the fastest growing real estate company in history. In terms of the amount of buildings that, that WeWork buys, etc. Yep. We're only catching up with the demand. It's like, you know. It's unbelievable. And a big shout out to your to, to WeWork's phenomenal investors because I told Michael years ago when I just heard about WeWork, I'm like, I don't get it. Why are you investing in real estate? He's like, just join WeWork, it's not experience it, and then you'll know. And sure enough, I did, and I have, and right. it's an amazing company. It's a privilege to work with such a bunch. I mean, I always feel the idiot in it. Yeah. That's the best way to work. That's if you feel like the dumbest in the room, that's the greatest. Yeah. I love it. You, know, you know you're fun. Yeah, Excellent. Right. All right, man. Keep right. kicking butt. Definitely. And keep growing that beard. Some of the things that I tell companies that I advise, a little point that can make a huge impact. I talk a lot about content, blogging, etc. The first question, what is the first question people ask when I tell them to start blogging? Who's gonna read it, right? Distribution, the first question everyone asks, all right, I'll start blogging, then what? You know, traditionally my answer has been, if you generate good content, traffic will come from search, you know, you'll distribute it on social, and long-term kind of play. But recently I've been working on some, and I hate this word, short-term growth hacks. And I want to give one example today. Interviews. I recently wrote an article about why interviews are a secret weapon. The reason I say they're a secret weapon is because not many people have implemented or tapped into the power of an interview. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Why are interviews interesting? When I say interviews, I mean interviewing people on your company blog. So over the years, I've interviewed people such as Steve Wozniak, Mark Andreessen, Dennis Crowley of Foursquare, Nick Gundatra, at the time Senior VP of Google, Bradley Horowitz, Alyssa Milano, Jerry Ryan, some pretty crazy people. How did I get to interview those people? Did I know Alyssa Milano? No, I did not. Did I grow up watching her on TV? Yes, I did. Was she my first crush? She was indeed. So how did I get that? 
everyone, no matter who you are, no matter how popular or famous or rich, it doesn't matter. Everyone likes to be on stage. And so when I reached out to Mark Andreessen, Mark Andreessen, for those that don't know, invented the web browser pretty much. He's the top, one of the top VCs, if not the top VC in the world. He's invested in Facebook and Twitter and Slack and all the hot companies. And so when I reached out to him, I literally just wrote him a DM on Twitter and I said, Mark, I'd like to, you know, interview you. You've impacted my life. I'd like to pick your brain. And, you know, he, he agreed immediately. We actually did that interview publicly on Twitter and that was one of the craziest days because there I am tweeting at Mark Andreessen from here in Israel. And again, Mark Andreessen at the pinnacle of the world of technology tweeting me back publicly and obviously a lot of people saw that interview was picked up by VentureBeat and it was a crazy day. But, you know, if I analyze why Mark Andreessen agreed to have me interview him, I would imagine that if I looked at Mark Andreessen's inbox on a daily basis, it's tons of incoming pitches. People are selling to him. Comes along this Hillel guy and says, Mark, I'd like to interview you. I'd like to spotlight you. Now, Mark Andreessen doesn't need my traffic or my spotlight, but I would imagine that it's somewhat refreshing to have someone reach out to you and not want to take something, but actually want to give you something. And so that's rule number one. Everyone likes to be on stage. And out of the probably 20, 30 people I've interviewed, that's how many people I've asked to interview, meaning they all said yes. So here's the thing. How long does it take for me to write 10 questions by email and send it to Steve Wozniak? It took me eight minutes, 10 minutes. So that's 10 minutes of investment, right? We're talk everyone talks about the ROI of social media, the ROI of marketing. So let's talk about the ROI of interviews. The investment is eight minutes. Literally, the actual investment in interviewing someone is eight to 10 minutes, thinking of the questions and sending an email. First things first, I reach out to Mark Andreessen. I say to him, listen, I would love to interview you. I now established some sort of basic, but some sort of relationship with Mark Andreessen. Again, everyone else is taking, I'm giving. It turns out, by the way, that that's just the beginning. But you know, now, all these years later, I would, I would actually call Mark Andreessen a friend as well as Steve Wozniak and many of these other people. You know, Alyssa Milano, we DM, we're, we're friends. And that happened because I came to them and I said, I want to give you something. I don't want to take anything from you. So first of all, you just establish the relationship. That's kind of the first thing you get from this eight minute. Is as soon as you hit publish on that article, what do you think Alyssa Milano will do with that article that you interviewed her and tweeted to her millions and millions of followers? What do you think Wozniak did? And what do you think Andreessen did? And all the other interviews, what do you think they, they shared it right away? So let's talk real numbers. I'm not talking, you know, abstract or relationship. I'm talking traffic. I'm talking my, my blog crashed. Every single time Alyssa Milano tweeted that article and she tweeted it many, many times over the years. So number one, you get a relationship. Remember, eight minutes of investment. Number one, you get a relationship. Number two, traffic. A lot of it. And that's assuming you interview someone interesting that has a following. Not to say that you should only interview people that are following, but it doesn't matter who you interview. That person is going to share it and going to promote it. What's the third thing you get out of this? What do you think everyone around me who saw that interview and who saw that relationship that I have with Steve Wozniak was thinking? Whether they know it or not, subconsciously they were thinking, wow, he'll interview Steve Wozniak. That's pretty legit. That's pretty awesome. And so in eight minutes of of investment. I facilitated a relationship with Steve Wozniak. I got a lot of traffic and I built my own credibility. You know, in terms of ROI of marketing, ROI of social media, it's a much broader conversation, but interviews are an amazing, amazing way to growth hack your blog. You start a blog, yeah, of course you need to write in-depth content and you write consistent content and valuable content, but how about do an interview once a week? Once a week you get an interview and your traffic will pretty instantly spike. Now again, you need to keep that up. A spike, you know, as soon as it goes up, it comes down, but the reality is that's a good way to put yourself on the map, establish relationships and build your own credibility as a brand. Interview people.